Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Audi, Truth in Engineering, Borg Warner, Feel Good About Driving, Bridgestone, Your Journey, Our Passion, Dow Automotive Systems, Improving Durability and Increasing Design Flexibility with Betamate Structural Adhesives at DowBetamate.com, and by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Welcome to a brand new week of AutoLine Daily, and now let's get to the news. Car sales in the U.S. are still going strong. Words Auto World forecasts that automakers will sell over 1.4 million vehicles in the American market this month, which is up nearly 8% from a year ago. And that translates to a SAR of 15.3 million units. We'll get the official results next week. The auto industry consumes a lot of natural resources, but one that doesn't get talked about a whole lot is water. H2O is needed for things like cooling towers at car plants, parts washing, and for painting cars. A little over a year ago, Ford announced plans to cut the amount of water it uses by 30% by 2015, and it's almost there. It already cut its per vehicle water use by 25%. And since 2000, its total use is down over 60%. Ford wants to use an average of 1,056 gallons to build each vehicle globally, and that is 3,997 liters. As we reported here before Consumer Reports did, the latest generations of hybrids seem to fall well short of the fuel economy they're supposed to deliver. The same goes for small displacement engines with turbos. So what technology does improve fuel economy? We've been saying that continuously variable transmissions deliver terrific real-world fuel economy, and Consumer Reports agrees. It also adds direct fuel injection, conventional transmissions with more gears, and electric power steering. And when you combine these technologies together, cars get noticeably better fuel economy. One of the major drawbacks of using compressed natural gas fuel systems is the amount of room that the fuel tanks take up. Researchers at the U.S. Department of Energy's Pacific Northwest National Laboratory developed a new lightweight, space-saving CNG fuel tank. They're made using superplastic forming technology along with friction air welding, which fuses metal sheets together at specific points to form internal air chambers. The tanks can be made to fit under a vehicle. They weigh less than traditional cylinders and will cost under $1,500. And we've got a whole lot more about CNG coming up in the second part of the show. And as we said last week, after Mopar unveiled six concept mo models at Moab, sometimes it comes out with a package based on one of those concepts. It looks like it could be a Ram pickup that might be able to take on Ford's SVT Raptor. Mopar says they need to do more research, but if it makes sense, they're going to do it. As some of you might have seen on our AutoLine Twitter feed, Bobby Smith from the 1970s soul group The Spinners died last week. In addition to singing hits like Could It Be I'm Falling in Love, One of a Kind, Love Affair, and I'll Be Around, Mr. Smith, who grew up in Ferndale, Michigan, was also a lifelong car buff. In fact, he credits the way his friends customized their cars with chrome Cadillac hubcaps for giving him the inspiration to come up with the group's name, the Detroit Spinners, which they later shortened to the Spinners. In case you've never experienced Bobby Smith's singing or the group at its absolute peak, you can't go wrong with their classic 1972 album simply called The Spinners. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at how the commercial truck fleets in the U.S. are getting real interested in natural gas and propane. Come in. Got the coffee? That was fast. We're out of here.
Commercial truck fleets in the United States are getting very interested in converting to natural gas or propane because prices are so low. Peterbilt, Kenworth, Freightliner, and Thomas Built Bus have all jumped into the market. International has a cost calculator on its website that shows how a Class 8 semi that runs on CNG can save over $150,000 over the life of the truck. Unfortunately for now, LPG and CNG don't make a whole lot of sense for you and me. There simply are not enough fueling stations to accommodate us. But for truck fleets that run the same routes and return to the same yard every night, it makes a lot of sense. Today's natural gas prices are typically $1.50 a gallon equivalent cheaper than gasoline and $2 cheaper than diesel. Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler now all offer CNG or LPG trucks. Ford has 10 different models. It charges $325 to add harder valves and valve seats, but then a customer has to spend an additional $10,000 or so to add the tanks and the fuel system. However, for many fleets, which easily put 100,000 miles on a truck a year, the payback is only about two years. Ford says its sales of these vehicles, while still small, have shot up 350% since 2009. Natural gas and propane in gaseous form hold less energy than gasoline or diesel, but by using liquid natural gas or liquid propane, trucks can pack much more fuel into a tank. Also, new fuel injection systems inject the fuel into the engine in liquid form, not gaseous, providing similar power and drivability to gasoline or diesel. LPG has a 105 octane rating. CNG is at 130. So far, none of the OEMs are modifying their engines to take advantage of this octane boost, so there could be further efficiencies to come. And depending on the duty cycle, these trucks emit 20 to 30 percent fewer greenhouse gases. Outside the U.S., liquid propane, commonly called autogas, is the most popular. It's the third most common fuel in the world after gasoline and diesel. There are roughly 17 million vehicles running on LPG worldwide, mainly in Poland, Russia, South Korea, Turkey, and Europe. But fracking is an American innovation. This is where natural gas prices have fallen the most and are likely to stay under petroleum prices for decades to come. So the United States is likely to catch up quickly with the rest of the world because the savings are simply too big to ignore. Anyway, that's how I see it. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.